So to remove your axle to flip it, of course, it's going to be the other way. Remove these three bolts on the end. These are 10 millimeter. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Four Boys Little Homestead Slash. Four Boys Play. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, as y'all can see, I'm going to be starting this project after I strip this trail master down. And again, this is the 150 XRX trail master. In the first couple of evenings and couple of mornings that I piddled with it, I wanted to strip it down in order to see what the frame looked like and made sure I had something that was worth working here with. And I'm going to get y'all over here and show y'all some up close shots of it. We got some rusted up under the seat, but it's not rusted into the pipe. And that was from the seats that I removed the frame up under the seats. It done set out there and that sponge in them seats, it soaked that water up. And the seat framing was eat up. But it didn't get into the frame. It was about to get into the frame. So I can buff that off and repaint it. So after stripping it down, doing a little research, the reason I'm wanting to go to a different engine than the GY6 engine that was on here, which would have been nice because they have the reverse set up and all that good stuff. But the price of it, this is just a project for me and hopefully a little fun go-kart to ride if I can get it going. <laughs> but I wanted to go with, I have, I'll show y'all. Oop, about spilt the coffee there. But the reason I'm wanting to swap these engines is cause that GY6 on, engine that was on here is totally toast. I'll show y'all the filter real quick. When this go-kart was parked, it probably could have been fixed pretty cheaply. But it was left sitting out in the rain with the air intake cover off. And y'all look at that filter. Well, of course, that water went straight on down through the carburetor and straight on down to the engine. So that engine was not fixable, savable, price-wise or time. Well, I looked at the just putting a new GY6 engine on here, and that's just more than I want to put into this because doing it this way, I already have this Briggs and Stratton 900 series. What is that? A 205cc engine. This engine was gifted to me. It was off of a tiller. And you can see it ain't been ruined that much, even though, I mean, the, the heat shield here ain't even rusted. Even though this motor here is about six to eight years old, it had been sitting in the man shop. He had bought the tiller, and looking at the tiller, apparently didn't run it very much at all before he stripped the gears in the Husky Varner tiller. Well, when he gifted me the tiller, that was going to be a project. I was going to put the tiller back together. He had took it totally apart, had it all on a pallet sitting in the shop for all them years. Well, I brought the tiller home when I got to looking at the sprockets that needed replaced in there and the price of them. I'm like, well, this ain't even worth fixing the tiller. I end up with over half the money that you could buy the new tiller for. Well, of course, the first thing I done was took the motor in there and checked it out with a carburetor on it. It had done set for so long when I tried to clean the carburetor, when I tried to remove the needle, the needle broke off in the carburetor. So I just bought a new carburetor for this engine and it runs good. So I'm wanting to put this engine on the trail master and I'm gonna get y'all over here and we're gonna start showing y'all step by step as I do this, prior to this. But I'm gonna have to get a bigger sprocket I had to flip the axle, which I'll show y'all 
how to flip the axle once my sprocket comes in and I get to that part because I got to remove it back off. I just stuck it on here temporary, flipped it to make sure everything was going to work and start getting my mind set around how I'm going to do this. Because the brake caliber's got to be swapped from one side to the other one. And I'm going to show y'all up close of what I got planned there and what I've seen on YouTube other people do. And of course, this ain't going to be exactly how other people does it because everybody does their own little different fab work and the way they're going to do it. But if this all works out good, and then later on, what I'd like to do is get one of them 420cc motors and put on there, which I ain't got one, and I don't want to buy a new one and put that much into this right now. Because what I'm going to be doing here, all I'm going to be buying is the sprocket, torque converter and a motor mount. I ain't even gonna build a motor mount. I'm gonna have to get some tubing and build my braces and stuff for the motor mount, but I can buy the motor mount cheaper than I can buy a piece of metal and try to slot the holes and all in it. I think it's like $25 you can buy the motor mount for. But anyway, that's what we got going on here. So I'm gonna just show y'all up close walk around and show you everything. So there's a close up of the Briggs and Stratton 900 series I'm planning on putting on here. And you could do this for one of the Predators, 6.5 horsepower. And actually that's what I got on the little go-kart and I got an extra, another extra engine in there. But they all, this one here puts out the most torque. But as you can see, I stripped everything out and I got some rust right here. But it ain't, it just, just was been to start getting to where it was going to start eating the pipe into. So I can grind that all off, buff it off with a wire wheel. Some of these other spots is trying to start resting, but it ain't no severe damage. So this will be the stuff that I'm going to be doing first, is getting this all repaired. Now, of course, I removed the gear shifter because this ain't gonna have no forward and reverse. It's just gonna be a straight forward go-kart. This here's the park brake. It's gonna be removed and I'll show y'all here in a little bit when I get to the back. Now, of course, it has a dash speedometer you can't see and that's not gonna be working. And on this motor, that's something I'm gonna show y'all, but I'm gonna leave this key start and stuff here Cause that's the switches to the light. I'm gonna leave this here in case one day I ever change this to a bigger motor with electric start. Now, speaking of electric start, this motor is gonna have electric start. It's got electric start on it here, but it's not 12 volt. This is my first dealings with one of these. And when I seen this motor, I got to researching and I didn't even realize they made them. But you can plug an extension cord in here out of 120 volt and hit that button and this motor will fire right up. So when I'm at the house, if I want to use electric start, all I got to do is stick the extension cord on there and electric start it. <laughs> Again, I've never seen that before. Once I started researching it, it's a common thing for, I guess, tillers and stuff. But that was new to me. I started checking out the brake caliper. The brake caliper on the back works, but my front two sticking. Now they may have to be replaced after I get things going. I think they like $25 a piece. Brake master cylinder, all that works because the back caliper works. I ain't gonna be worrying about no lights or nothing because this engine ain't gonna have no battery on there to start with. All the bearings look good, everything. Like I said, this is just a project. That's what the little caliper looked like. I took it off and, and I might be able to get them cleaned up some more. I ain't spent a lot of time on them. I took them off and just stuck them back on. Back here on the back, your axle is originally flipped over. 
and your mass your brake cylinder calipers mounted over here to this little bracket and that bracket well in order to put one of these other style engines on there you flip you just flip the axle and like i said when i go to put my sprocket on i gotta remove this axle i'll show y'all up close of how you get the axle out of here it's not that much to it but you flip the axle on them and the reason i'm having to remove the park brake because this is the park brake apparently some of them on youtube their cylinder wasn't made the same as this or they didn't mention it on some of the videos i watched but this has to be removed because this is the brake caliper it was mounted over here like so so when you flip the axle you got to flip this and i'm gonna have to some of them cut this off i ain't gonna cut that off i don't want to weaken this beam i can drill a hole in this other side and get me a spacer just like that and weld on this side i can get me another little piece of metal and cut me a bracket like that or that in there i can probably it's just tack weld on probably cut it off and i'll weld it right down here after i get the motor and everything lined up but the reason you had to take the part brake off is because for it to flip over and work it'd be like that the part brake side here was going to be hitting the frame of the go-kart but the caliper still works just by removing them two bolts and taking your part brakes it just ain't gonna have no part brake no more which most go-karts that i've ever been on ain't never even got much of a brake much less a part brake <laughs> this bar going across the bottom here i have to be cut back here and then i'll probably cut it right here and just leave that on there even though that ain't gonna be used for nothing but it could box something if you run over something but the reason this bar has got to be cut because in order to get enough torque out of these smaller engines i'm going with the biggest sprocket and the biggest sprocket they make i think it's a 72 to 12 inch round so that that's gonna have to be cut now in order to get a sprocket for these trail masters the only one I found with these sprockets, other than the original sprocket for them, you can get them anywhere, is on Go Power Sports. Because the deal is that sprocket, I think this measured two and a quarter inch center hole. And they are the only ones that's got aftermarket sprockets that'll fit right on here. Now they're about 60 something dollars. And it's simply because they special made them for these. Because the original sprockets and other sprockets you can buy all day long for around $25, $30. But, like I said, we got to have that sprocket. So my plan on the bracing the frame and how I'm going to mount the motor. Is I'm going to put square tubing and I'm probably going to put two of them. I'm going to put... You could get by with one, but I'm going to put two probably right straight across. Have two coming across. And then I had this board up here using it just as a something to look at. And that would be the little motor mount. Not board here, but a metal motor mount sitting on there. It will be welded to them square tubings going across. And then you got the back frame here that was bolted up that pivoted on to here some of that had to be cut out but i'm gonna put it back on there because i want all the support and braces i can get i have seen some of them they look like they left this part off and that's it right there on the ground but the motor will be sitting something looking like that and of course the fuel tank here will come off because I'm going to be using the 
existing fuel tank that was mounted up here on top. You remember the original picture there at the beginning. So this will come off. It'll be a torque converter put on here, and I'm going to get the one from Go Power Sports. I think it's like, it's a Series 30, but it's like $130. And you could get some of them Amazon ones for about $60. But since I already got the motor and ain't having to put no money into the motor, I'm going to go on and buy the better torque converter. The biggest bracket I can get. And like I said, I think my total, even if I had to replace them two calipers on front, is going to be around $300 that I'm going to have in this conversion. Of course, I didn't have nothing in the frame. It was gifted to me. The tires, they kind of dirty and look nasty, but they ain't nothing wrong with them. I got a lot of riding left on them. Now, the seats was rent inside the go-kart. I'm not going to buy the seats like was in it because they like $180 a piece. I think I can come up with a some way to build some seats for just a go-kart. Like I said, we ain't building this for top speed and worrying about flipping and jumping hills and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to fabricate my own seat and y'all see that toward the end. But guys, this video here is going to be drawn out. It's going to be several days, just what days I want to pillow on it for a little while and what I want to do. So as you jumping through even this first video, you're going to be seeing this a lot of things that, that you will be able to tell that it was a pretty good time gap day-wise in between me working on it. But we're going to try to do a video of at least showing y'all every step of what I do in case you want to do this. Like I said, I watched a couple of videos on people doing this. They give me the overall shot, but it wasn't a step-by-step -step like I'm wanting to help people out and see if they can want to do this. I can't never get a true answer on how well these small engines with the big sprocket torque converter a pull these tires on backs a 22 by 10 by 10s but if you measure the height of the tire they only measure like 20 inches tall so if this motor don't have enough torque one thing i could do is go to a smaller back tire i don't know what the smallest tire they make for a 10 inch rim but even if you went down, if it's an 18-inch tire, well, like I said, on these, they see 22 and they measure 20. Well, if you if they make them 18 and they measure 16, that's four inches different. That makes a lot of difference in torque. So that's something else I might can get more torque out of this. Third backup plan is if everything works out and we really like it, it's seem to be doing good but ain't got the torque I can always upgrade to a bigger motor and have this motor already set up for a small go-kart frame or a replacement motor for our small go-kart frame we got <laughs> if you ride go-karts enough these motors ain't gonna last forever especially the one on the the one on that little go-kart and I show y'all right here that's the predator and that's got all the power and speed you need for a little go-kart like that. So when something happens to it, I got this motor that if I wanted to upgrade a bigger motor here, I could use on my little one. Plus, I have another little motor. And this is the motor that was on the little go-kart. I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's Y-A-M-A-K-O-Y-O-T-6. Now the carburetor that was on this one, of course, when I took it off to clean it, it was so bad, I just bought a new carburetor and that's the same carburetor that was on the Predator. Fit right on here. But this one does have a little different, bigger air breather. This one's made for a go-kart, bigger gas tank. 
So it's ready to go back on there if I need to put it back on there. Guys, I don't know how far I'm going to get with this this morning, but I am going to proceed. And I decided I am going to take my little four-inch grinder and I'm going to cut this spacer here because it's the right size for the boat. Because the boat comes through from the outside to screw into your caliper. So I'm going to take my little grinder and I'm going to cut that off flush. And then when I have the welder out here, I take a little piece of plate or something and weld to stiffen that back up to make sure it didn't get weakened. So I'm going to take my grinder, cut that off, get it over here, try to get it lined up and mark. The thing about lining this caliper up, you got to make sure this caliper ain't pushed all the way in in the top right here sitting on your disc brake. It's got to be a little gap in there so it won't be rubbing on your top of your disc brake. So all that's got to be lined up perfect before you drill that hole through here for that bolt. And put that spacer which would be I'm holding it wrong. That's why I got to get this off because I got to get it to where it'll work. Because it don't work just like it does originally because you flipping this upside down. So originally it was screwed into here. Now that's going to be on bottom. On this caliper, I don't know if they all this away. You can't flip this bracket over. Because it has to line up here. And here with the caliper. To slide in through them holes. So it's kind of got to be remanufactured here to make it work upside down and we're gonna see if it works so i get back with y'all guys i got that cut off and i ain't gonna have to do no welding or nothing there all i'm gonna have to do is just take an extra bolt nut and stick through there because that ain't weakened and the reason i saying that it ain't gonna be no difference than where they got a hole drilled through the frame here for the fender mounts on both sides. But I will put me a bolt and a nut through there just so it ain't a hole. And I ain't gonna have to do no welding. So now I'm gonna have to course straighten up where I cut that off, but I'm wanting to hold it here and show y'all real quick what I'm gonna be trying to do. Something like that right there. Drill a hole through this, get it perfectly lined up, drill a hole through there, weld this heavy duty spacer on there, cause this is a thick wall, that's why I cut it, cause I didn't have nothing like that, that that bolt fit perfectly in. Cause this can't have no kind of movement or play in your caliper when you get it mounted. It's got to be just as sturdy as it was when they had it mounted. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next, is lining this up, and when I get back, I'll be done drill the hole, which I ain't gonna show a video, I'll just use a drill, drill the hole straight, weld this around there. All right, guys, I got the caliper mounted. Now I'm fitting to weld it, but I got it mounted in place, and everything seems to be lined up very well. Like I said, now I did go on and cut this off. And I did go on and cut that bracket. Now I gotta smooth them sharp edges up on that one with the grinder. And since this caliper is flipping over, and what used to be screwed with the top is now on the bottom, that little bracket was long enough. And once I seen that, I cut it. And now I'm finna weld it around there. But I'm finna tack weld it. And then I'll remove it and weld it good. But I was going to show y'all something. This bolt right here, you had to put a spacer nut. And once I weld that, and I weld it, it'll look like this other side. Y'all see how they let their spacer that went through the frame come all the way out? So you had to put some kind of spacer. 
if you didn't, your bolt would be too long and would screw through your plate here and hit your disc. So I got mine spaced out with one nut, flat washer, and a lock washer. But I'm gonna weld this nut to the frame and weld this right here to the frame. So I'm finna be welding that. Okay guys, I said I was gonna show y'all how to remove this axle when you get ready to flip it after I got my sprocket in. But I need to remove it so I can give this all a good weld and grind it and clean it up. So to remove your axle to flip it, of course it's gonna be the other way. Remove these three bolts on the end. These are 10 millimeter. And they got a nut on the back of them. That's a number 12. Once you remove that, you got this little cover here with your bolts. Slide it back. It's got a seal in it. Slide that back and then slide this back with the bearing in. Now that don't slide back as easy as mine just done when you first take it apart. You're going to take a little rubber mallet and bump on it to get that to come out. Now I'm going to do that same thing on the other end, then I'll be right back. And once you do that same thing on the other end, then you're going to need to remove these four bolts, which I done loosened. All right, you break this. Now the way the break disc can flop over. Now these are self-locking nuts they don't have no washers on none of these that way you disc now if you look right down here in the where the axle goes through this bracket it's slotted you know see that slide under there but it ain't slotted big enough for the big part of the axle to go through so what you have to do Slide your axle all the way to one end until it gets to the small part of the axle. And then you can drop it down and slide it the other way and drop the other end down. Now, since I'm only needing to work on this one end, I'm not going to take mine all the way out of both ends. Because all I'm going to do is get a good weld on this and this and clean it up and paint it. And then I'm going to temporarily put mine back in place because it's going to be several days before I get my sprocket and stuff in. So I just wanted to go on and show y'all how you get the axle out. Like I said, you do have to, when you're doing it the first time, this bearing is, according to how old your cart is, you're going to have to take a rubber mallet. I took a rubber mallet and started hitting it on this side on kind of different sides as I was doing it. And it broke right off and come where you can slide it down. So now I'm going to finish up my welding and clean it up. And there it is guys after stuck back together. But I just discovered something else. If you really don't want to cut this little bracket off because it's kind of in a hard spot to cut. As, as I was removing some more stuff like the parking brake mechanism there is a good bracket right here that you could easily cut straight which i'm finna cut off because i ain't gonna have no parking brake and i don't want none of this sitting up in here also this one that was where the forward and reverse gear shift so that bracket right there would have worked perfect just cut off then took your cutting torch and kind of cut you a half circle so it'd sit down over that pipe. So I thought I'd bring that to your attention. And you wouldn't have to cut that one off the back because these need to be cut off anyway. 